Some of the things you're going to see are very, very graphic, but I'm going to try to give you my opinion on what's going on, and maybe it'll serve you, or maybe it won't. But we, what are we going to do? We're going to try to serve the interests of the world. So on the one side, you got Israel suffered a, a brutal uh, terrorist attack, and on the other side, you have the people in the Gaza Strip going through something like this. So you got two people, and um, what's happening? At this point in time, they are... Killing each other, running each other over, stabbing each other, uh, murdering each other indiscriminately. Children are dying on both sides, right? When you see something like this, who's not going to get angry? Who's not going to sympathize? And then you're going to hear all of the stories on both sides of all the atrocities. So we're going to figure out how it got that way, right? Just to show you, you know, you got this kid kidnapped somewhere on the Gaza Strip, you got children dying. And then when they kill each other, then you got some people urinating on dead bodies or raping or, or, or what have you. So, so what happened? Let's break it down. We could go all the way down back in time to uh, Abraham and his covenant with God to really figure this thing out. So that's a really, really long time ago. But just recently, um, a bunch of people paraglided in terrorists as they like to call under Hamas or something like that paraglided in and massacred out of raw hatred and anger massacred finally got their hands on a bunch of Jewish people all right so just to let you know Milo before we pause the story right there just to let you know I was born in Azerbaijan I have a Muslim name Maksud Agajani I have a Muslim father and I have a Jewish mother I've got family in Israel I got family in the Israeli Defense Force. I got a very big Muslim family. I don't have any Palestinian family. I don't have any family, by the grace of God, anywhere near Hamas. But I have a unique perspective on it. I'm not here to choose sides. I'm not here to play games. I'm here to tell you what's actually going on. Because the amount of hatred between two groups living to, next to each other is out of control. So they paraglided in. They drove in. And they massacred vast amounts of people. And now there's a retaliation. Unfortunately, Hamas doesn't have a normal army. They, ha they hide their army in civilian populations, or at least that's what I'm being told. And I'm sure there's going to be someone screaming at the top of their lungs saying, no, this is this, or Israel that, or what are they supposed to do, or whatever. Listen, this is what, we, what I know so far. They hide their army in civilian populations... And because they hide their army in civilian populations, sometimes Israel gives them a knock, says, hey, everybody get out of here. But right now they're not even doing that because now Hamas is saying, hey, if you're not going to knock before you knock down a building, we're going to start executing hostages. But they don't even care. They don't even care about the hostages. They're just bombing the shit out of this place and destroying everybody's lives, which is the real question. The real question is, what's the plan? What's the plan for Hamas when you're coming in and you're uh, going into a techno rave at 6 in the morning and you're kidnapping people to rape and to kill and you're going from house to house to killing, that's not a good plan, that's not a good look for those people in Gaza. But some might say on the other side that, oh well, you know, what are they supposed to do? They're living in this open air prison and they've reached their limit and this is where they're at. If it was me... Whatever I was in the world, I would never be paragliding in and uh, murdering innocent civilians. If, I had a, if, the, if the people in, in the Gaza Strip have a problem and they went to war uh, with even, uh, you know, a, a serious military target, I would at least understand. But what they did was inexcusable. And now we all understand as human beings, not as Jews or, or Palestinians or Muslims, as human beings, Hamas has to go because they started a very, very disgusting conflict uh, and took it to another level. But um, uh, the issue is, is that these people have been herded in this area. There's no exit for them. They can't go through Egypt. They're forgotten. They're neglected. They're dehumanized. And now they are retaliating in a nasty way. However, this attack seems to be like it should have never really happened because they're all closed in in this little border area, right? We could go to... The map of the world, which is very important. You know what I'm saying? Let's go to um, uh, Gaza. Okay? And let's go on maps. And let's even look at it. You know, the world is a big place. 
You can't even see Gaza on it like this. But this is the Gaza Strip right here. These people can't get out. It's got a little border with Egypt. They, they, at one point of time, this was under the control of Israel. Israel was very crafty, was able to win many wars. And they're frustrated because of that, because they have uh, better technology, better support, better coordination, uh, better everything, really. And that's to their credit, right? If you had to live somewhere in this area, I would prefer to live here under a democratically ruled normal society, civilized, right? Closer to what you might find in the United States and Europe, because I came as a refugee, a Jewish refugee from Azerbaijan to New York City, to the United States of America. And that's um, uh, preferable than to sitting here throwing rocks at each other or, you know, going crazy in the streets or whatever it is. I don't want to live like that, to be honest. That's why I want to separate myself from this issue, but, uh, 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 but we're focusing on humanity here. Gaza Strip, they can't leave. They've been herded in this corner, used to be part of Israel. Now they wanted their own autonomy. They uh, elected a uh, terrorist organization as their leadership, maybe because of frustration, maybe because of, out of anger. And they're making choices that are very, 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 very stupid because they're attacking and throwing rockets that hardly even land and then the retaliation comes it's like me going into a maximum security prison and then punching the biggest guy there in the face and then getting the shit kicked out of me you know i don't know if that metaphor really works for you but what's the point of aggravating a more powerful state right next to you so they could sit here and retaliate and then put you in a position with images like this so the question we all want to know is who is to blame? There's nobody to blame. Jewish people went through the Holocaust. They wanted to create a state. They created a state. Nobody was happy about it. Take a look at the Muslim world. All right. We're not even going to count. We're going to actually we should count all the way from Africa, from Morocco, going all the way to Pakistan. A lot of Muslim world in Kazakhstan, through Turkey, there's Azerbaijan right here. That's a big chunk of the planet right here. And the Jewish world, the Jewish world is right in this little tiny spot. That's the Jewish world, a tiny small population hanging on. So they created a state. Where are they going to create it? In New Jersey? They created an ancestral land. Nobody was happy about it. Everybody attacked. Everybody lost. Everybody lost. They didn't want to get off the stage. They wanted to vow, we're going to kill you. Vow, we're going to destroy you. But they can't do it. And they're frustrated, frustrated. Let me tell you something, man. You may be pro-Palestinian, and I'll never take away the humanity of the people living in this area. Because whether they, were, they want a Jewish state or not, this area is conquered by the sword. It was supposed to be a gift from God to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, David, and Solomon. But it came with a deal. It says, you know, in the Bible, if you don't do A, B, and C, you're gonna, you're not gonna stay here for a very long time. And then, you know, some, some something happened two thousand years ago. Nobody could really explain it in the Jewish community. But the temple was destroyed, and uh, that's a different conversation. And then everybody got dispersed uh, all over the world, and that's how I ended up in Azerbaijan, so to speak. And then they reconstituted that state. Nobody's happy about it, but they're holding on to it. And there's no other place to hold on to. But the people here were never really happy about that. And they were always pushed out. Because in all reality, as a Jewish person, I, a person, I could tell you, the, whole, the plan is to be able to go all the way. What's, what's, what's the original Israel under Solomon? Or Zionism, whatever they might want to call it. It goes all the way up to Lebanon. And people are being elbowed out gradually. And they're very angry about it. And they went crazy. And now you have to live in a state of perpetual hatred. So the real enemy here is the hatred. Don't fill my comments with hate. I don't want to participate in hate. It's two sides. I respect the lives that have been ruined and destroyed. I don't condone terrorism. And if you're going to do something and you want to make yourself look like human beings, come up with a plan that actually works. Not going to the, the nightclub, not blowing up a pizzeria. You get no sympathy for that, no matter what it is. You have to respect the fact that these people are suffering grievously. I'm not hiding their suffering like all the other propaganda. 
I'm not showing that, you know, they're losing their children, but you have to share that blame with this terrorist garbage organization that's running your uh, little strip of land that you've been cornered into. So, you know, you have to share the blame on that. You've got to figure that out. And then you can't really tell the Jewish people that they, they don't get a chance to hold down a, a little strip of land. Because what's the God's honest truth? The God's honest truth that instead of buying license plates in fucking Saudi Arabia where that's the big deal or doing a bunch of other stupid shit, they could have helped these people out and lived in peace a long time ago. But no. Why the fuck would they give Jews a little fucking scrap of desert this big and help uh, these displaced people and really take the higher road? No, buy them weapons. All the fucking money they spent on rockets, they could have been living in mansions, each and every one of them. Think about that. All over the, pl all over the place. You could have built cities all over the Arab world, the Muslim world. But between the rockets they're firing and the rockets... The Iron Dome is blocking. There's no money left and they're living like animals over there. So the world is filled with hatred. Forget about the Palestinians. Forget about the Jews and the Israelis. The world is filled with hatred. Everyone is blinded. If you can't see both sides of this, 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 these people and see the humanity in either side and what's actually going on, the problem isn't Palestine isn't Israel the problem is you that's the story here it's you and what the fuck you understand so that's my little point of view good luck with that